Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Q&A, Social Security Disability Today. I am your host, as always, Tony Reeves, attorney at law, and it's my pleasure to have you here with me today. Let's get cracking. All right. First question, we got about four questions. As always, I encourage you to keep them coming. Is what should I expect from the representative I hired to handle my Social Security Disability case? Okay. Couple of things. First and foremost, for those of you who send me questions, and I want you to keep them coming, if you have a representative, and I tend to ask people, do you have a representative, there's a reason for that. One of the reasons is that your representative is there to provide you information about your disability case. They can assess it for you, they can give you an idea of where your case is at, they can find out information about your case a lot faster and they have the responsibility of answering all those weird hyper-technical questions that you may feel are a waste of their time. That's why you hired them. Now, when people ask the question, what should I expect? It's tough because what you expect and what you may receive is usually two different things. And let me explain what I mean by that. A lot of times when people look to hire an attorney, they're thinking that hiring an attorney is gonna do one of two things get them a result that they want and get them the result that they want fast. Now, there's a difference between the two. Attorneys always strive to get you, or representatives, whether it be non-attorney reps in social security context, strive to try to get you what you expect. Now, getting it for you fast, that's a different story. So I always tell people, keep it in its proper perspective. The only type of venue from a legal standpoint that typically gives you the ability to move your case through fairly fast is a criminal standpoint. Everything else takes a while. So when you are trying to figure out what can I expect from my representative, ask them, what do you do? Because a lot of times what happens when we go in there and or when clients come in, they're looking for two things. They want their disability benefits and they want them as fast as possible and they think you're going to be able to help them do both. Find out. How long should you be waiting in the process? What's gonna happen in, to, in, in the interim while you're waiting? What should you be doing while you're waiting? What type of services are they providing to you while you're waiting? And what do they do in terms of from start to finish? And this is the biggest thing I stress to people who have representatives all the time. Open your ears and listen. And I'm not trying to be nasty, but hear what I mean when I say this. A lot of times when you go in, and trust me, even though I'm an attorney, there are times when I am, as a consumer, whether it be going to a doctor or a mechanic, whatever the case may be, anytime you're going to somebody in the professional services arena, it's very easy to only hear what we want to hear. So when we don't hear what we want to hear, hear, we get an attitude. When the person has already told us exactly what we needed to know, but we kind of weeded through it because we didn't hear what we wanted to hear. When your representative is talking to you about what they are and what they are not, what they can, what they can't do, and what they can provide to you, listen and ask questions. All right? Now, here's another question. Why do I need a special needs trust? I got a person who asked me a question here because they're talking about the trust pays their rent. They're wanting to know, is it necessary if they don't live in an assistant living facility? And what if the person is on SSDI? They got a couple of questions here. Let me explain to you how the special needs trust work. And we talked about this last week, but I'm gonna go ahead and break it down to you again. A special needs trust serves a particular purpose for serving as kind of a filter point so that your income or resources that you receive from another source doesn't count as income against your social security. One of the things people lose sight of, like I was amazed when people get social security, they don't realize the Social Security has a bunch of programs that are disability programs. Disabled children, disabled widows, disabled widowers, disability insurance benefits, and SSI. So a lot of times when people say Social Security, it could be any of those. Special needs trusts typically are applicable to SSI types of cases. Now this is where I always tell people when people are like, why do I have one? Why won't somebody set it for me? You probably have one because you have a component of your case may be SSI. If you're not sure, because this is where people get confused, because what happens is that they think, well, I'm getting disability benefits, so I'm getting Social Security disability. I'm not getting SSI. And I always tell them, dude, you do realize it's the same program. It's just a different name. If somebody, it just and for those of you who are like, I'm still a little confused, think about it like this. If I am an automotive engineer 
and I have, and you wanted a car, and I gave you a BMW, gave her a Benz, and you're like, well, my car is BMW, I have a BMW. No, 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 you have a car, and the type of car you have is a BMW. Don't automatically assume that every car is a BMW, and you say, well, I got a Benz, that's not a, that's not a BMW, that's not a car. No, a Benz is a type of car, BMW is a type of car. Supplemental security income is a type of social security disability program. Disabled insurance benefits program is a type of social security disability program. Disabled widower's benefits or widow's benefits is a type of social security disability program. So this kind of lays, and this is kind of as an aside, if you find yourself questioning whether certain things apply to you and you're not sure whether they should, like a special needs trust or a representative payee, contact Social Security for clarification. Don't just assume, because a lot of times what happens is people assume on the receiving end as opposed to going to the source. If you have a special needs trust or a representative payee or you have one of those little funky provisions, there is a reason. Don't try to figure it out on the back end because you're sitting and going, uh, well, I'm not an assisted living facility or I'm not, you know, let me see what they say here. Well, I'm, not, I'm on SSDI. When I'm reading that, my first thought is, okay, the problem is not the trust. The problem is that you don't have an understanding of what program you're on. And so you need to go and you need to clarify with Social Security. Because the reality is special needs trust, a lot of those little funky provisions are set up specifically for your benefit. And that's the other thing that I like to remind people. Be mindful when you're sitting here thinking that you don't need something that has been set up for your benefit you might cause more damage by trying to go and say you don't need it than taking the opportunity to educate yourself about why you have it in the first place. Once you have a full grasp, and this is why you contact Social Security or you contact your disability determination agency for your state or your government or your county, whatever, once you know why you're on it, then you can determine whether you need it. Okay? Now, another question. How long does a Terry case take if it is now in the appeals process after the hearing? Ha! For those of you who've never heard of a Terry case, and the acronym is T-E-R-I, and Terry stands for terminally ill. Now I'm gonna tell you, there I have not, and, and this is one I'll say, just purely out of just coming off the hip, I've not really read the regs in terms of the specific time period. I can tell you that in my almost 10 years of dealing with Social Security, Terminally ill cases usually move extremely fast. When somebody's case has been elevated to a Terry service, let me just be blunt, they think you're gonna die soon. That's when they say terminally ill, they think you're going to die soon. So they don't drag on their decisions. Can I give you a definitive timeline? No, but it really just depends and it depends on what point they determine the case was a Terry case. I can tell you I had a Terry case with a lady uh, bless her heart. She was um, diagnosed. She had her cancer came out of remission. She applied for disability um, one on one week. Three weeks later, she was on disability. She passed away two months later. They don't mess around when they determine you're a Terry case because they know the time that you have is very limited. And if you're in a case where you're in appeals and you're waiting on a decision, it's important if you have a representative to call Social Security to remind them. They know already because they they've been doing this for years. But if you're worried because the person's situation is maybe escalating in terms of their health, make sure you contact them and let them know. All right, last question. How do I report a suspected fraud? Ha, this comes up every now and then. And this is what I tell people when people say, how do I report a suspected fraud? I'm like, well, first of all, all you gotta do is call Social Security and say, I have a reason to believe that this individual um, is not disabled. It's really that simple. Now, here's the kicker, though, I tell people all the time. How do you know? A lot of times, we are a visual society. I have news for you. Not everybody's disability is visual, meaning you can't just look at someone and assume that they're disabled. Because, of, because let me kind of move it back and, and add one little caveat. The law and the, and the regulation says that a person does not have to live in a vegetative state when they're waiting to get disability or even on disability. In other words, just because you're disabled doesn't mean you can't do the normal things you can do in your life. You may have to do it with some modifications, but it still does not affect it. You can still go to the grocery store. You can still go fishing. You can still go shopping. You can still do some of those things. I always caution people 
when they are thinking about reporting Social Security disability fraud or Social Security fraud to remember, you don't know why the person is disabled. You really don't. You think you do, but you really don't. You haven't seen their decision. You don't know what condition they were found disabled with. So when you are looking to report, there's nothing saying that you can't, but just keep it in this proper perspective that you may not know the reason why somebody is disabled. And if somebody's like, for instance, if somebody is disabled due to a mental health condition, that might not have very much bearing on how they operate when they're out in the public, meaning they may not go around crowds, but they may still be able to go fishing and, and do their laundry, and cooking and cleaning and so forth. You don't know. So yes, you have a right to report it. Just call your local social security office, tell them you have a reason to believe somebody is committing fraud and they'll take it from there. They have internal investigation units that handle those things. But always remember this, you don't really know why they're disabled. So keep that in proper perspective for those of you who are screaming that you see people who are on disability benefits who don't know, who don't need to be on it. Let's be real. You don't know why they're on it in the first place. So you're really not in the best position to make that decision. But you, as a good citizen, if you decide to do so, just contact your, local, contact your local Social Security agency and let them handle it. All right, everybody, as always, it's my honor and pleasure to bring you another edition of Q&A, SSA Disability Today. As always, you know, you can leave me comments or send me messages for questions for the week, or you can email me at anthony at reevesfirm.com or check out my blog at legalbeat.anthonyreeves.com. I hope you had a good day and look forward to your next questions and look forward to seeing you here again on Q&A. Social Security Disability Today.